Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to our vodcast on eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells are the two groups of cells that all living things are either made up of. Now, these two groups are broken up into two separate categories because they have major differences between them. So let's take a look at three major differences between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. The first big difference between them is a presence of an organelle called the nucleus. In a eukaryotic cell, as we have above here, you'll see in the middle of the eukaryotic cell that there's a big round structure. This structure is called the nucleus, and this controls the cell, and inside the nucleus our DNA is stored. However, if we take a look at the prokaryotic cell, you'll notice the prokaryotic cell does not have this big round structure in the middle. However, its DNA floats loosely inside of the cytoplasm within the cell. That's one major difference. Eukaryotes have a nucleus, prokaryotes do not. The second major difference between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells is the presence of structures called organelles. Eukaryotic cells have what are called membrane-bound organelles and these structures include things such as the Golgi complex, mitochondria, the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum. However, if you take a look at the prokaryotic cell, you'll notice that it doesn't have any of these organelles inside of it. So, they're lacking in membrane-bound organelles is another difference between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. And the final difference between the two cells lies in where the cells can be found. Eukaryotic cells are going to include all animal cells, plant cells, fungus cells, and protocells. And the only type of cells on Earth that are prokaryotic cells are bacterial cells. So whenever we reference a prokaryotic cell, it's just a fancy way of saying a bacterial cell. So let's take a closer look at our prokaryotes. Now as we discuss prokaryotic cells, we're going to discuss three properties of them. We're going to discuss their shape and structure, we'll talk about how they reproduce, and then lastly we'll talk about the differences between the two kingdoms of prokaryotic cells, which we actually discussed earlier this year when we went over classification in the kingdoms. So let's take a look at our notes here. Now let's take a look at the three different shapes that a prokaryotic cell can be. If you take a look at this picture here, the prokaryotes or the bacterial cells are in the colors green, blue, and like a pinkish purple color. Now if you take a look at the green bacterial, you notice that they have a spiral shape to them. That's one of the shapes that a bacterial cell can be, and this is called spirilla. Now next to one of the green bacterial cells, you'll see this blue rod-like structure. This is another prokaryotic cell or bacterial cell. It does have a different shape, the rod-like shape to it, so because it has a different shape, it has a different name. And this is called the bacillus bacteria. And below the green and the blue, spirilla and bacillus bacteria, you'll notice that there are purplish red round structures. This is a third shape the bacteria can take. They can be round spherical shapes, and these bacteria are called coxibacteria. Now remember, spiral bacteria are called spirilla, rod-shaped bacteria are called bacillus or bacilli bacteria, and sphere-shaped bacteria are called coxibacteria. Now that takes care of the three different shapes of the bacteria. Let's take a look at the actual structures of a single bacteria. So here's a diagram of your basic bacteria cell, and as you can see, it's one cell big. So this big red round structure on the outside, this is called the capsule of the bacteria. And as you can see, the capsule is made up of different layers, and this is used to protect the inside of the bacteria. Now the reason why the inside needs protecting is because the inside has the most precious substance inside of the bacteria called the DNA. The DNA is this big tangled mess in the middle here, it kind of looks like a big plate of spaghetti. Well, this is the genetic material of the bacteria cell, and this is what has the instruction for all the activities that the bacteria cell needs to take care of. Bacteria tend to stick on things, and they stick on things using these hair-like structures called pili. So, in order for a bacteria to land on something and stick to that surface, to be able to start digesting it or breaking it down, and then reproducing, they need those pili hairs to kind of anchor into that. Now, some bacteria, ladies and gentlemen, thrive in a moist environment, so they have to be able to swim through that environment. So some bacteria have a structure called a flagellum, which is located back here. 
flagellum is just basically a tail-like structure that the bacteria cell can whip through the water to help propel it through the water so it can swim and move through the water. These are some of the basic structures that a bacteria cell can have. Let's take a look at how a bacteria cell reproduces. The way a bacteria cell reproduces is a process called binary fission. Binary fission is an asexual reproduction type where two identical cells are formed. So in asexual reproduction, the offspring is always identical to the parent cell. Let's take a look at the four steps of binary fission. First of all, step one includes the growth of the parent cell, or the original cell, which would be this cell here. Being that it's going to make a second cell, it does have to grow and get bigger to make more materials to be able to put into the second cell so the second cell can thrive. After the cell has grown a little bit, you'll notice that the DNA loop in the middle of the cell will start to replicate. So the DNA replicates and then begins to split making two of the copies. One copy will stay in the parent cell and then another copy will go into the brand new offspring cell. Once the DNA splits, it goes into step three and as you can see in step three, not only does the DNA move to the opposite sides of the original cell, but that original cell starts to split. The cell membrane starts to pinch in. And then in step four, the cytoplasm or the filling of the cell completely splits and the cell membrane pinches closed and then creates two bacterial cells. So this is how the process of binary fission works in creating two identical cells. Now the last part of this vodcast is going to include the discussion of the two kingdoms of bacteria. And as we talked about back in classification, bacteria can be broken into two categories or two kingdoms. We have the kingdom of eubacteria, and we have the kingdom of archaebacteria. Now if you remember, the major difference between these two kingdoms of bacteria is basically where the bacteria are found. So eubacteria, or more modern bacteria, and they are the larger of the two kingdoms, and eubacteria typically live in more mild areas such as soil, water, and actually inside of your body. Remember, we do have bacteria inside of our body to help us digest food. Now, archaebacteria, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit older. So, since they're a little bit older, they've been around for more harsh conditions, and that's basically where they live. Archaebacteria live in extreme environments or harsh environments. Some of these environments can be extremely, extremely hot. Some of these environments can be extremely salty. And some of these environments can be extremely acidic. So, as a result, Based on where these bacteria live, they're categorized into different groups. We have the heat lover group in archaebacteria, and the heat lovers love high temperature homes, like the hot springs at Yellowstone Park, or the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. We have salt lovers, which enjoy extremely salty bodies of water, such as Great Salt Lake in Utah, or the Dead Sea. And then lastly, we have our acid lovers. The acid lovers love environments that are high in acids or have a high acidity to them. Okay, boys and girls, these are the basics of prokaryotic cells. Thank you very much.